It took a little while, but fall has finally made it to the bluegrass date. Welcome back everybody. I tell you what, it's a little warm today, but uh, we've got some nice cool mornings going on and everything, so I'm ready for some fall food that I like to cook up. So inside we've got some uh, ground beef in there. We're gonna whoop us up a nice little meatloaf and smoke it out here on the Weber kettle. Let's get going guys. Hey right, guys, here I got, uh, this is 80-20 ground chuck picked up at our local market. And it's roughly two, a little over two pounds, almost two and a half pounds. And uh, I tried to get closer to two pounds, but it just wasn't going my way. Uh, very simple, guys. This is uh, one um, one small, it's a sweet onion. I was trying to find a good bad day, but they did not have it. It's about as simple as it gets. I've also got a uh, one green bell pepper. It's all just going in the mix, guys. I tried to keep it simple. Coming in uh, roughly, uh, I'm just gonna go by taste, I guess. A little start out with maybe a half a teaspoon of uh, black pepper. I'm just adding some pepper in, folks. And before I forget, one egg. Here I got uh, about three quarters of a cup of uh, Italian style breadcrumbs. Lastly, I'm gonna go about, oh, maybe half to three quarters of a cup of just some barbecue sauce. Normally you'd catch it, but hey, we're smoking this. Let's get some barbecue. Of course, I'm using Sweet Baby Ray's Hickory Brown Sugar. Come here, let's get the shot. Okay. Hey guys, now we're just gonna get busy here. And yes, I just go in with my hands. Go so until everything's well mixed. It's one of those deals, you want everything well combined. You don't want to over mix it. I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> I know a lot of meat loaves, they get them uh, very finely chopped onions, very finely chopped peppers. I kind of like small chunks, but I don't want it too fine either. They'll render out and soften up in the loaf. Okay guys, I got this aluminum loaf mode and I'm, I'm not going to use this on the grill but I am going to use it as a mode just to form this. So let's see if we can get this thing out. Notice I got some saran wrap on here. That's just going to help us transfer it onto our sheet and onto the grill. Watch what I do here. Don't have to be real pretty. Gonna need a bigger loaf pan. That's all right, we got this. Guys, I'm gonna cover this. I'm gonna let it hang out in the fridge while we get the grill fired up. And let everything just kind of fall in love in the fridge in there, maybe about uh, 20, 30 minutes or so. not using a full chimney full of charcoal. I think it's gonna do fine for what we're doing. Setting up for an indirect cooking zone here, obviously, creating an oven effect. I could have probably formed this by hand, but I just kind of wanted to show you this trick to see if that will work. I got more beef than I normally do, so let's see how this goes. That don't look too bad, not perfect. Look at that. We can play with it a little bit. I got this uh, wire rack here. I'm actually gonna cook it on there. 
for ease of transfer. All right, we're gonna let this hang out. When that comes up to temp, we're going on the smoke. Half of this here, the other half over here. On our Weber drip pan, that's to keep everything nice and neat inside the grill. Any drippings will go into the pan and not in my grill. Get things heated up here. Got my vents both on top and bottom. Set it about a medium, medium open. I'm shooting for, let me turn this around. Shooting for a cooking temperature around, I don't know, 350 to 400. Preferably somewhere in the middle there. Great, it's pretty clean after my last cook, but just to be sure. And so I don't give my buddy Charlie a treat, I decided to put on a pair of gloves for this. I will be monitoring ambient temps here with my remote internal probe. Got one set up to feed the internal temps inside here. We should monitor it pretty good, and I will have a second one in the meat itself. Time to get this show on the road. Grill temperature is roughly about 450 and I need to get that down, but I think it'll come down some right now. And our smoke today, just about any time I cook with a beef burger, I almost always use a pecan wood. It'll go nicely on this meatloaf. All right, guys, let's get it going. I'm going to play with the temps, get the temps under control. Oh, missed. I almost forgot something. Almost forgot something. Let's go with an internal right there. Get our smoke on, folks. I don't know how well you can see that. We're running actually a little bit lower. Uh, this is at 360 degrees cooking temp and we're a little over 100 degrees so I'm gonna get some carrots on here as our side so I hope you don't mind the interruption on this but I wanted to check on this and let you see the meat about halfway through the cook that looks so good guys it's actually starting to come loose a little bit on me but that's all right I think we'll be fine if you don't mind I'm going to add some carrots here put them on here to cook at the end, I'm going to roast them off over directly over the charcoal. We just season them a little bit with the uh, salt, pepper, garlic uh, with some olive oil. Good deal. Okay, guys, I just want to give an update. We are, ooh, look at that. We are good. We're in overtime now, guys. It's taking a little bit longer than I anticipated. Look at these carrots, guys. Look at got a little roasted effect there. I'm gonna pull them off. Oh, they're very tender. I'm gonna pull these off. We're about 140 internal on the meatloaf. I want to get it to about 150, and I'm gonna start glazing this. Not a perfect cook, in my opinion, but it looks great. But I'm gonna start glazing this with some uh, uh, some barbecue sauce, guys. But uh, we're very close. So hang tight. I'm gonna finish this thing up. I'm gonna get these carrots off of here though. I'm not sure the lighting is going bad on me, so I'm not sure how well you can see this. I think you can see it bad, but I'm gonna start the glazing on this. Again, this is some uh, sweet baby rays, hickory brown sugar. I'm gonna do this a few times. It broke up a little bit on me, but I think we're okay. Gonna be good. I'm sure glad uh, I brought out that uh, wire rack. Yeah, ooh, it's hot. That's for Charlie. We're at about 150. About 152 internal. We're gonna take it up to about 165 and we're gonna pull this. 
might even bring it in at 160 and let the uh, uh, ambient temperature kind of take care of it. Come back in a minute, we'll uh, finish this up. Even though I've had some cracks that I was not expecting, I'm gonna wait for flavor. We're at temp, or we're getting close to temp. At 158, 165, I'm pulling this. We're gonna let it rest. So as a matter of fact, guys, next time you see me, we will be inside ready to cut this. Okay, guys, I definitely underestimated the timing on this cook. So we've had about nearly two hours. <laughs> I was estimated about an hour, I did hour and 20 minutes. So I went over, uh, I don't know what it is, but we're at temp here. Uh, it broke up a little bit on me. But uh, I don't really care about that as long as I get the right flavor. So let's cut into this and see what we got, guys. Ooh, it's definitely hot. Definitely hot. Mm. Smells amazing. Let me get a piece of this right here in the middle. Kind of falling apart on me. It's all right, I don't care. All right guys, this was not a perfect cook, but I'll tell you what, I got some flavor going here. Got dark on me. I had to cut the outside shots uh, a little short. Uh, that time of year, guys, it's, it's what it's about, but check this out, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That was, uh, I nailed the flavor. The, the barbecue sauce, it's there. Uh, I've got the peppers, the onions, they're all cooked in there perfect. All right guys, you cannot even do this outside on the Weber kettle without using barbecue sauce over the ketchup, which is a normal topping on this, and it turned out great. I do got a smoke ring here. Uh, let, let me try this carrot real quick. I'm rushing this so I can get the family fed. So the carrot also roasted, very tender. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, it, it turned out good. I got nailed the flavor. I'm gonna try this again at another point, uh, maybe another recipe, whatever. It's been a while since I've done a meatloaf, and I've never done one on the kettle. So I've caught a learning curve. I right, definitely took longer than I anticipated, but uh, everything went good and they've got the flavor. We'll try this again another day. Folks, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for tuning in, watching us. Uh, hit that like button if you don't mind, if you haven't already subscribed to us. We've got plenty more to come. So folks, until next time, I will see you on the next video. God love you folks. Bye-bye.